There it is, Fuji X-T2. Look, Fuji X-T2. It's the co-flagship camera. It's on par in the Fuji lineup with the Fuji X-Pro2, which we reviewed a couple months ago. It's the same processor. It's the same sensor. You've got, you're gonna get the same picture quality out of this that you're getting out of the X-Pro2 if you use the same lenses. You gotta wonder, well, if it's the same camera as the X-Pro2, who's this for? Why does this camera exist? And why would you get this instead of an X-Pro2? Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today. The X-Pro2, as we know, is an old rangefinder style camera, has an optical viewfinder, uh, and just a different form factor. This is more of a DSLR style body with a viewfinder in the middle, EVF only. If you like holding this camera more than you like holding the X-Pro2, then you're gonna be fine. You know, it's up to you. For me, I was, uh, I didn't wanna like it. I, I was like, uh, I don't need no DSLR style camera to shoot on the street. I wanna be like, Omni Cartier Bazin. Ow. Once I actually got out there and started using this, uh, it wins you over pretty quickly. It's, uh, it's comfortable, it's easy to use. Uh, all the buttons are, are easy to get to, so you know, don't write that off just yet. Just a difference, it's a matter of personal preference. So they've upgraded the autofocus in just about every possible way. It's more autofocus points, 325 autofocus points. What Fuji does is they use the phase detect and the non-phase detect in concert to create sort of a hybrid autofocus system. All I can tell you is this, it's fucking fast. Uh, this thing is just stupidly fast to autofocus. I thought the X-Pro2 was fast, uh, but especially when you combine this with one of the, uh, the new 35F2 or 23F2 uh, lenses, Holy moly, this is not the old days of pointing a camera at a subject and, and the focus kind of going Okay, it's locked. No, we're talking boom boom. You look at something half press shutter in focus Why isn't every camera like this? Well, I don't know. It's just one of those things. This is uh, this is good stuff. This is top of the line now I don't do sports photography. I don't I'm not filming cars. And I'm not shooting wildlife. that's flying through the air I'm a street photographer uh, and really we all know how I deal with autofocus. I do faux zone focus. I use the autofocus motor uh, in every camera or every lens to set the lens at its hyperfocal distance. And then I shoot like I'm using a manual focus camera. Uh, but what I've learned from using this camera over the past few weeks is that, yeah, maybe it's time to rethink that whole idea. This is fast enough that you can just be walking down the street, see a subject, focus on one, one aspect of that subject and shoot. It's like instant. When photographers, especially photographers of my age, think about autofocus, we think, oh God, that's slow. I don't want to use that. Yeah, it's not really that way anymore. Autofocus is caught up to our expectations of it and it's good. And this, one of the best I've used. I would say in terms of mirrorless, the best I've used. So <clears throat> just like on the X-Pro2, you got the dual card slots. But now both slots are UHS-2 compliant. So you're gonna get the fastest possible speed uh, out of both of these cards. Uh, how you use the dual card slots is up to you. You can use it to create continuous so that when one card's full, the next one fills up. You can use it to uh, constant back. Turn it up to you, but it's in there and it's fast. Uh, so they're both good. Good, more, more slots. Good, slots. Slots, what? Slots. The one thing you're gonna notice right away, the one thing that really stands out is that funky articulated LCD screen on the back. Now, Fuji's, we've all seen this. It's just a matter of how it works in real life. They give you the regular LCD like this way, flippy, flippy, so you can be stealthy with shooting, but they also give you this. So if you wanna shoot ver vertical, I guess. I'm a street photographer, I'm like, what's vertical? Uh, <laughs> like 97% of all my photographs are horizontally staged, but I don't know. I guess that can come in handy if you're taking pictures of kids or following your dog around, dog, I, it's there, whatever. Me, I've been using this camera for a few weeks. Honestly, I've never touched that LCD because it's just not the way I shoot. I'm an eye level kind of shooter. Uh, there's, it depends on your style. I know people are gonna love that, so it's there. Flippy, flippy. One more thing that's, and this is a really probably the most important difference for me, uh, is the EVF. This is one of the best electronic viewfinders I have ever seen one of the best. I think the Leica SL beats it. It's got a 4K resolution viewfinder in it. Uh, the Leica Q is a close second behind that. This, this is, in my mind, even better than both though, uh, because it's not on a $12,000 body. Uh, but more importantly, it's got uh, a 0.77 times magnification. The image in this thing is huge. It's like watching a giant TV set 
Uh, and my tired old eyes, this matters. It, I can't tell you how refreshing it is to actually be able to see the things I'm photographing. Uh, when I was using the X100, and I love the X100, you know, really I'm looking at that and I'm, I'm kind of making out shapes and relationships between a thing. I can't really make out a lot of detail on this. This camera, no problem. Uh, the EVF is 100 frames per second uh, refresh rate. You look through this, it's just like looking at the real world. It's kind of hard to describe. If you haven't seen it, go to a store, put this camera to your eye and look at how good it is. Uh, it's really good. The uh, X-Pro2 only had a 0.60 uh, EVF and the, and the, the uh, EVF on the X-Pro2 only had 80 frames per second. It's all pretty close. The X-Pro2 had a fine viewfinder, no problem. This one's just out of this world. It's really good. Definitely worth it. Worth, worth the price of admission alone just for the EVF as far as I'm concerned. Now this one is inherited from the original X-T1, but there's a separate ISO dial now. No more stupid ISO dial hidden in the, uh, the shutter speed dial to fumble with. This is just a solid clicky ISO dial. Easy to operate, easy to set. You can set the, uh, if you want, you can set the, both of these dials lock, but they're kind of tight enough that you really don't have to worry about it. I mean, if you're really worried, you can lock them and then you can't move them until you, it's a push, push, lock, put. Anyways, that's there if you want it, but this dial, fantastic. Every camera manufacturer, please add this. Forget, like a push a button, turn a dial. Forget Sony, find a menu, turn, turn a dial one. Or, forget all that. Dial, fix it, look. Oh, what's your ISO? 400, done. 800, done. 1600, done. That's the way a camera should work. Uh, so everyone should really, I wish I was not as blind as I am. Anyways, and the final difference is, uh, this will shoot 4k video. I'm a street photographer. I'm not going to shoot video on the street, but I shoot video, uh, when I'm not shooting street photography. So having it in the camera, Hey, it's not a bad thing. I don't mind it at all. It's there. So those are the differences. Let's talk about body handling. Let's talk about using the DSLR style body. I'm coming from uh, range finder style bodies. I shot with Leica gear uh, from days of film Leica through digital Leicas. I've been shooting with the X100 uh, for the past little bit. Really like that a lot. Big fan of the X-Pro2. This is a different shooting experience, but it's not that different. Uh, really what you're looking at is the viewfinders in the center of the camera instead of off to the side. Uh, and the controls are just spread out a little bit differently. It's really easy to get used to shooting with a camera like this. In fact, after about a day, I was like, huh, oh, this is just the way that I want my camera to be. Uh, it sits really well around my neck. It's really easy into my hand. My hand very comfortably fits on this front grip and this little thumb deal on the back. I don't know, this is good. This is, this is well laid out and well designed. Every button, every dial is exactly where you'd expect it to be. Uh, I'm not hitting any buttons by accident. I like it. Me likey. Good DSLR. You know, as street shooters, I think we get caught up in the romanticism uh, of uh, rangefinders and rangefinder style bodies. Yeah, it looks old timey. It looks like the kind of uh, camera that Henri Cartier-Bresson would be using. But the reality is it's just a tool to take pictures. Uh, and if you've got a tool that works, use it. This one for me, eh, it's pretty damn good. I like it. This is inherited from the X-Pro2, this little the little autofocus knobby bit, so you can change your focus point. Ah, uh, what? People do that? Okay. I, honestly, I'm like, the only time I've ever used this knob was to turn that feature off so it didn't get used accidentally. I'm not even kidding. I have, no, I tried it one time. I was like, oh yeah, I never want to use that. Uh, I shoot manual, so I have no problem with uh, focus and recompose to get the focus on the thing that I want. If you're shooting with auto exposure and you do that, you're gonna lock your exposure at the same time so I can see why that might be valuable. But why are you shooting in auto exposure? It doesn't make sense. Learn how to expose your camera properly and just work. So, no to joysticks. So one of the problems with shooting with an EVF, the, the way the EVFs work is they're giving you a feed right off the sensor. So what you're seeing is exactly what the sensor sees. It's through the lens, you're getting the perspective of the lens, uh, you're seeing what the sensor sees. But in order to make an exposure, your EVF has to black out for a split second or sometimes longer uh, while the camera makes the exposure and then you get to see what you're doing again. With my X100T, that's about a full second. So you're shooting, you take an exposure, one, 1,000, okay, now I can look at my subject again. It's a nightmare. This is fast enough, it's 114 milliseconds blackout time. 
I've never seen anything that fast. Ready? Nothing. It's gone. Oh, it's like, it's like blinking your eye, right? You don't notice yourself blinking your eye in the real world and you don't notice this thing just kind of, it's there, it's good. And listen, I'm, I'm an old rangefinder guy. I, when I was shooting Leica, I drank the Kool-Aid. I was all about all the reasons why an optical, go back and read some of my other reviews, why all the optical viewfinder is the right way to shoot. You see your subject at the moment of exposure. Uh, you can see outside the frame lines to, uh, to, to see what's coming in and out of the frame. Uh, you know what? The, the reality is optical viewfinders and rangefinders were a compromise to make the size of a Leica camera as small as possible and compensate for the fact that you can't see through the lens to focus on your subject. They were a compromise and people started using them and found reasons why they worked better than some other systems. Uh, but I started uh, about nine months ago using the EVF exclusively on my X100 and nothing has been a greater boon to my photography than that. Uh, I, I can now see exactly what my sensor sees through the lens from the perspective of the lens. I can see exposure uh, in real time. I can, I can judge lighting conditions in real time. It's really worked for me. I'm kind of a convert. And I was a full, full on like, give me range finders or give me duh. Ah. This is not the highest resolution uh, EVF that I've ever seen. Um, the Leica SL is 4K, it's a better resolution. But these guys kind of nailed this. It's 0.77 times, like I said before, it's huge. If you look through this, the image is huge. Go in a store and look through the viewfinder on this camera and tell me if you're not impressed. It's really that good. Now, one small thing that I noticed, if you have your camera on and you're walking around, as I normally do, I keep it EVF on all the time. And that's something, wait, I gotta talk to you about this. Sony, even with EVF only on a Sony camera, the eye sensor is in play. So if the camera is not at your eye, the EVF is off. So in EVF only mode, when you put the camera to your eye, you still have like a quarter second delay before you see your image. With the Fuji EVF only, it's always on. Walking around, I pick the camera up and I've got a, ca a picture in there, just like I expect. I shouldn't have to be like, oh, okay, there, now I can see. I'm shooting street, I need to be nimble. So this thing's always on, it's a really great thing. Now, here's the thing I was gonna say though. The, uh, there's a weird thing where, because uh, it's 100 frames per second in boost mode, uh, refresh rate in this, which makes this thing look fantastic. But once in a while, it'll drop down to like four or five frames a second. It's like insanely slow. And when you half press the shutter, it goes back to its normal mode. I don't know, it feels like it's a weird power saving mode or something. Uh, but I'm fingers crossed this is going to get fixed in a firmware update. The X-T1 didn't do this, uh, so it's probably just a, an initial release thing. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. What you should think about is if you haven't looked through this viewfinder, go to a store and look through this viewfinder. It's fantastic! It's the reason I like it, because I don't care about the, the LCD. I don't care about a bunch of the other stuff. The shooting video, yeah, yeah, it's great. Really, I'm out there taking pictures. I care about how I'm going to interface with the camera in the world. And... Uh, Man, that is nice. Watch, I'm gonna use it now. Oh. Yes, I like this camera. <laughs> I kind of like it a lot. Would I buy one? Oh yeah. <laughs> I would totally buy one of these. What I can tell you is shooting on the street with this camera for the past few weeks uh, is I've run into no roadblocks. I love this new sensor. I love the way that it handles. What I want to say about the sensor, it's darker. It holds shadow detail while still having contrast in the shadows. Uh, it's not punchy like the X100, like the last generation of the X-Trans sensors. It's smoother, it requires a little bit less manipulation in post, uh, but it's kind of a darker, more substantial, it's like a heavier image. I like it. Uh, and getting that uh, image, or getting that sensor in a package that is as accessible as the X-T2 is, uh, it excites me. Um, so I'm probably gonna get one. Oh, you know, here's one thing too. I, when the X Pro 2 came out, I was like, said the same thing. I really like this camera, do, 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 do. I'm gonna get one, and I did. Uh, and, but I ended up getting rid of it right away. Back then, six months ago, there was no 23 millimeter F2 lens. 23 millimeter, which is 35 millimeter full frame equivalent on APS-C bodies, the 23 mil lens is what I need for street. It matches my mind's eye, right? It's the way that I see the world. So without that lens, the X Pro 2 kind of, 
wasn't that useful to me. And uh, it wasn't that different of a shooting experience from the X100. I keep pointing down my X100s on the ground. Uh, it wasn't that much difference of, an, of a shooting experience from the X100 to warrant trying to adapt to a different lens or getting the big ass 23F 1.4 lens. Um, now here we are, the 23F2 is out. You got the choice uh, of the X-Pro2 or the X-T2. And my money's on the X-T2. I think it's just a little bit more usable. I can't emphasize enough how enjoyable this EVF is to use uh, when you're out shooting. Uh, it's really that good. So that's where my money's going.